In this problem, we're asked to calculate the common value of the two flux integrals, uh, which is the same due to Stokes' theorem, since these, surfa since these surfaces have the same boundary, of uh, the flux integrals of the curl of F through these surfaces M1 and M2 by calculating whichever one of these flux integrals seems the easiest to calculate. And here we have that our F is equal to z sine x, uh, z e to the y, x, y, z squared. Uh, M1 is the disk of radius 3 in the x, y plane in R3 and M2 is the upper hemisphere above that disk. So in order to start, we want to calculate the curl of f of, f of x, y, z. Uh, to do this, we use the standard uh, determinant uh, looking uh, expansion for the curl. So curl is grad cross f, which is equal to, again, th this formula looks like the, uh, the formula for the cross product, i, j, k, and then partial by partial x, partial by partial z, and then our f is z sine x, and then z e to the y, and then x, y, z squared. Uh, then we use cofactor expansion to uh, get the coefficients of each of the uh, vector terms in this cross product, or, yeah, cross product. So this is equal to going to be equal to i times the determinant of this Submatrix. Minus J times the determinant of the matrix uh, obtained by deleting the middle column. plus k times the determinant of this uh, sub uh, minor matrix, which is all right. So now we can start. Now we can start calculating this. Here we have partial by partial y of x, y, z squared minus partial by partial z of z e to the y is going to be equal to x, z squared minus e to the y. Uh, this determinant is going to be equal to uh, partial by partial x, y, z, so this is going to be y, z squared minus sine x. There's a minus in front, of course. And down here, uh, z e to the y has no x dependence, and z sine x has no y dependence, so this is plus 0k. So this is our curl of f. Uh, now, we need to calculate the flux of this curl of f through one of those two surfaces. Now, because this now because um, the curl of F has uh, has k has uh, zero uh, z component, if the normal vector of the surface we choose is in the strictly positive positive or negative z direction, then the dot product of the curl with that normal vector will be zero, and thus the flux will be zero. So, if we can pick uh, a surface which has uh, zero, uh, a surface whose normal vectors point in strictly the z direction, that's going to make everything a lot easier. And of course, the disk in the xy plane is going to have normal vectors uh, going straight up and straight down. Uh, so in fact, um, let's erase this stuff and rewrite del cross f down here. Just put a box around this so we can remember, so, we can, so we can highlight it at least. Um, M1 has normal vector is equal to just k. Because uh, in the xy plane and the normal vector of the xy plane or any subset of that is going to be k once again. 
Uh, so this means that the flux integral uh, over m1 of curl of f dot n hat ds is going to be 0 since uh, n hat dot curl of f is k dot curl of f, and uh, th that's going to be equal to uh, 0 i, or 0 i dot i plus 0 j dot j plus 0 k dot k, which is 0. And so uh, the common value of the flux integrals of uh, both of the, uh, of, the, of the curl of f through both of these surfaces, since, uh, so, since they have the same boundary, and Stokes' theorem says that uh, each of these flux integrals is equal to the line integral of f around the boundary, this common value is going to be zero.